How you doing there today? Today I'm going to do a video on how to do a belt ten tension check and a belt alignment on the Indian motorcycle. Uh, this particular one is mine. It's an Indian Chieftain. It's a 2015 model, but all of the Chieftains uh, should be pretty much the same as well as the other uh, Indian motorcycles. There is a difference uh, in the uh, belt deflection on uh, a couple of the models. So I'm going to grab my laptop here because I have the factory service manual downloaded to it. And there's a few things that I want to read you verbatim out of the Indian uh, service manual. This isn't the owner's manual, this is the actual full Indian uh, motorcycle service manual. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to grab that laptop. And uh, so what we've got here is a couple of important notices and a couple of warnings, okay? So it, it's extremely important, important notice number one, do not adjust the belt when wet or immediately after riding. The belt must be dry and the drivetrain system must be at ambient temperature, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. This is extremely important for accuracy. So right now in here, my thermometer is saying it's 71 degrees. So I'm in the money there. Uh, important notice number two. Perform this procedure to achieve proper belt tension and alignment. Belt tension should be set before performing the alignment procedure. I'm going to show you what an out of alignment belt looks like because mine is out of alignment. As to its tension, I haven't checked that yet, so we'll find that out in a minute. Okay, here's a warning. Okay, now this is a safety warning. A drive belt that is not properly tensioned can cause driveline noise and damage to the drive belt, causing possible belt failure and loss of control of the motorcycle. So think about that. If you're not comfortable performing this, uh, procedure, then you probably need to make an appointment at the shop. I've had motorcycles for years. I'm comfortable with this, but you may not be. So if you're not comfortable, please take it into the shop. And secondly, the other warning. Care should be taken to be sure the motorcycle will not tip or fall while elevated. Severe personal injury or death may occur if the motorcycle tips or falls. So part of this procedure is to put the motorcycle on a motorcycle jack and to lift the rear wheel off of the ground. Uh, that has to be done before the rest of this can be done. So uh, make sure when you do that that your motorcycle is well secured that it doesn't fall over on you. So what we'll go to next is I'll show you the, the tools that you're going to need to complete this procedure and it's all pretty straightforward stuff. You may need to order the belt tensioner but uh, tension uh, measuring device. Uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll show you that and I'll show you the one that I bought and there you can order uh, Indian part number uh, PV43532 that's PV43532 that's the Indian part uh, number for this tool but I have a generic one so I'll show it to you okay here's the tools you're gonna need to do this service you're gonna need a torque wrench mine is a uh, 3 8 drive torque wrench um, you're going to need to be able to torque something to 65 pounds. That'll be your rear axle nut. Uh, I have a 3 8 breaker bar because I had a tight, couple tight nuts uh, on my uh, left exhaust pipe, the muffler. And so I did use that. Um, I have also a uh, half inch drive ratchet and a um, belt tensioning gauge tool. Um, I'll tell you where I got that. You can get that on Amazon.com. And it is all graduated. Belt tension gauge. Got a little little uh, washer there that you put at the 10 mark right there. And that gives you 10 pounds of pressure against the belt to check deflection. Once again, Amazon.com, and a 3 8 drive ratchet, a wobbly short extension, a 13 deep socket, a 13 regular, a 15 regular, let's forget the muffler off, 
and uh, this is a 27 that's for your excellent so those are all the tools that you're going to need and uh, you'll need a lift to be able to lift your motorcycle up and uh, and get it straight and level with the rear tire off the ground as you can see spin that all around and uh, that's going to be something you're going to need to be able to do so I got that one on Amazon.com for about 50 bucks so pretty decent and it's good for 1100 pounds all right that's what you're gonna need okay as you can see now I've got the motorcycle uh, lifted up off of the uh, the ground the rear tire freely turns and quite some time ago I made this little mark right here to coincide with where my valve stem is so when I want to check my air pressure in my tires, I don't have to like take the saddlebag off to find that valve stem. I know it's right when this uh, little bullseye is right down, uh, that's going to be uh, where my valve stem is. So a little close up of that. Okay, so there's a mark and there's the valve stem right, right there above it right above the mark so all right so here's another thing and I didn't know this until I got to reading the manual but if you look under your bike you're gonna see when you've got this area exposed and you'll notice I've taken my saddlebags and uh, my left pipe off and uh, because you know you need it off to do what I'm about ready to do here I'm gonna do two things actually three I'm gonna inspect the belt for wear and damage I'm gonna check it for tension and I'm gonna check it for alignment this little device right here that's not a decoration that's actually a, a measuring device to tell you where uh, if your if your belt is in proper uh, proper tension so it's a tensioning device and uh, uh, we can go over how that works here in just a minute that's in your owner's manual by the way and it's also in the service manual okay now I'm going to show you what a belt looks like that's that's not properly aligned if you look at this it's my rear drive sprocket obviously if you look at this you'll see that you can see teeth on this right hand side of the belt if you look at the left hand side you can't see any this distance and this distance over here should equal each other you know there sh there should be the same spacing on each sides of the belt when it's in the lifted off the floor straight up and down position at ambient temperature and dry you should see that this this, this belt is riding right in the middle of this sprocket now I've got about four 13 and a half thousand miles on the motorcycle once again this is 2018 it's a 2015 so I've had it almost three years uh, just about a month short of three years and in that length of time uh, in 13,500 miles give or take uh, this belt is is out of whack is out of adjustment and it's the original rear tire it's in great shape I uh, religiously monitor my uh, you know inflations and so forth so make sure I'm not running it low so that belt is out of whack and it, it should be adjusted but only after it's tensioned properly so we'll go ahead and uh, check the tension next now that you know what one that's out of alignment looks like we'll check the tension next okay looking at the manual you can see that there's a few uh, subtle differences which reflection am I getting on that hopefully that's better okay you can see there's a few subtle differences the the chief the chief dark horse the vintage those should deflect 1.1 inches with 10 pounds of force or 28 millimeters the Springfield the chieftain the Chieftain Dark Horse and the Roadmaster should should deflect 1.3 inches. Okay, 
So that's what you're shooting for. 1.3 inches is 34 millimeters. So uh, real quick again, the Chief, Chief, Dark Horse, and Vintage, 1.1 inches of deflection at 10 pounds of force, middle of the belt. And the Springfield, Chieftain, Chieftain, Dark Horse, and Roadmaster, 1.3 inches. Apparently there are some swing arm uh, differences there between those uh, motorcycles. So 1.1 on the, on the Chief, Chief, Dark Horse, and Vintage, 1.3 on the Springfield, Chieftain, Chieftain Dark Horse, and Roadmaster. Okay, so this, this thing goes in a few different parts. If you look under here, you can see uh, pretty well my drive belt there. Okay, just down right here. And here's that adjustment window they talk about. All right. And I can tell my belt's loose. It's it's going to deflect more than 1.3 inches. Once again, this bike is a chieftain, remember. So, I'm just kind of scratching my head on how best to do this. Uh, and I, I kind of came up with my own system. Uh, um, we'll see how it works. So, it says to start out using the valve stem as a reference. So, I've got my valve stem with my proprietary mark on the tire and the valve stem right above it that's going to be my starting point and they want us to check the relative tension of the belt every quarter turn of the tire so we'll, we'll check uh, take a measurement and then we're going to rotate the tire um, and then uh, we'll do that 90 degrees and then we'll go ahead and take a measurement do another 90 degrees that way the valve stem will be facing straight up and then we'll haul off and uh, do it uh, two more times until the valve stem is back where it was. And what we're looking for uh, is the tightest uh, or the least amount of movement, and that's going to be our adjustment point. Okay, got a little bit longer stick now. So all I, all I did is I just took a piece of plywood, short piece of plywood, and I'm going to make a, a mark with my belt. Just I'm kind of in the middle of the... Of the belt you know, want you to do it you know kind of as close to the middle between the the drive sprocket and the driven sprocket the rear so i'm kind of right in the middle there i'm gonna scribe a line there now i'm gonna just deflect this up now we're not worried about the 10 pounds of tension yet we're just we're just trying to see where the belt's the tightest and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and try and mark that You know, I'm I'm not pushing up. I'm not pushing up uh, with 10 pounds of force or anything, but I'm already at an inch and three eighths. So, yeah, pretty close to an inch and three eighths. So, I don't know. It, I, I'm thinking it's going to be loose. So now we're going to rotate the tire 90 degrees. Right there. I'm gonna make a. black mark there okay and it looks to me like uh, we're pretty close to the same this this one's this measurements gonna be black Pretty close. Okay. And next we're going to go 90 degrees further. Do a reference mark there. Okay. Get back in the same place on the floor with our stick. And this, this one's going to be blue. same place yeah. 
and then lastly we'll come all the way back around another 90 and that should be right about there and that's going to be a silver mark in the same place I marked the floor so I know where the stick was at and it looks to me now that we've got four now they want us to go around at least twice so there's once twice <coughs> and go to where our belt was the tightest so that was our blue mark. So that's going to be with the valve stem one. Two. Right there. So that's that's the tightest deflection that we had. So that's where we're going to do our next test. Now that we know where the tightest point in the belt is. That was those four checks that we did, 90 degrees rotated, and we rotated a few more times and went back to that spot. That's the spot they want us to check this with the gauge. So uh, we'll take our gauge, make sure that the O-ring is set at the 10 pound line, and it is. I'm gonna use uh, my ruler uh, and measure the height of the belt above the floor. And I'm gonna put that ruler as close to the front of that, uh, uh, to this, belt guard guide mark this thing right there and then i'm going to put the the tensioning gauge right up against it so i'm at 230 millimeters above the floor that's 23 centimeters we're going to go with millimeters so we're 230 above the floor right there let's push up 10 pounds make sure it's vertical looks good we're at 270 275 five millimeters so 275 millimeters we started at 230 that's a difference of 45 millimeters we're allowed 34 so subtracting the 34 millimeters uh, spec from the 45 that exists on my belt and we're at 11 millimeters uh, too much deflection so the belt needs to be tightened up and uh, to where it's uh, pretty close or balls on that 34 millimeters so uh, it's pretty simple one more time let's check it again let's put the ruler at 230 there's there's 2 210 to 20 230 or 23 centimeters right at the bottom of the belt that's height above the floor let's Push our gauge up to the 10 pound line. Read it 20, 274. Yep, 274. So that's what we're at. We're 11 millimeters too loose. So we're going to uh, move to the rear of the motorcycle now and we're going to um, loosen the rear axle nut and then we're going to turn the adjusters to bring that, uh, that, um, uh, belt uh, tighter so stand by okay here we are on the the port side of the motorcycle the left side of the motorcycle and if you look at this you see that I have my uh, left pipe uh, slip-on removed and I have the true drill the true dual headers and the slip-ons if you have the factory exhaust uh, I don't think it's any more difficult to get to this point either is slip that left pipe off there's basically two bolts back here at this mount that hold it in the back you get them in from the inside with your with your 13 uh, socket with the uh, wobbly extension and then on the front it's a 15 millimeter uh, clamp that clamps it off to the header here so um, that's easy uh, saddlebags off clamp two bolts pull the header or the uh, muffler and uh, you can easily then get to this 
this bolt, which we know is a 27. So it's welded on the other side, so it's just this one. So what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna go ahead and break that loose. Just like that. Back it off ways. It's a nylock. You know, back it off to where it can stuff can move. You know, give that a little bit of a wrap. Okay, when you put the socket on this adjuster on the right side, it's a lot harder to get on than it is the one on the left side because, well, the muffler's still in the way, but the sprocket is there, the driven uh, sprocket is there. So there's only really one way to do this, and here's how you do it. You take your deep socket, 13 metric deep, and you put it in there. And it won't engage right away, so just slowly rotate it until you feel it slip on, okay? Once it's in there and it's on the adjuster nut, then what you do is then you can take your ratchet and uh, with the wobbly extension, and you can see that gives you plenty of room between the, the driven sprocket and uh, your ratchet. And that's how I access that. That's the only way to do that. Make sure that you put the socket on first, then put the ratchet on the socket. I'm going to start taking up some tension on that. And uh, then what it says to do is it says to take up some tension and then tighten the axle bolt up to torque spec, that's 60 pounds. And then, um, and then recheck your your uh, belt tension. So I've gone about I don't know a turn, maybe a turn and a little bit more. And I really don't know how far to go, so I'm just going to have to play with it back and forth a little bit till I get it to uh, that 34 millimeters of deflection. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to leave this right here. And I'm going to uh, retorque my, uh, my axle nut on the other side. And I'm going to retorque my axle nut on the other side. And then I'm going to, uh, to recheck my belt tension. Once that's all done, then I'm going to be able to, uh, to align this, this uh, belt. So we'll work on that next. Okay, so what, what we're going to do now is we're going to retorque this nut. Took up a few turns on the adjuster over there, a turn, turn and a half. And uh, we're going to retorque this nut over here to 60 pounds. It's a, I've already gone to 15, and then they want you to go from 15 to 60. So, okay, there we are. We're at 60 pounds. So the axle nut is tight. Now it's time to go check the belt tension again. Set it at 230 right in the middle of their adjustment window right right we're at their pointer pointy arrow on their adjustment window i'm at 230 millimeters above the floor my gauge is reset to 10. my deflection gauge belt deflection gauge is reset to 10. i'm putting it right against the ruler i'm going up going up going up 263 263 264 give or take 263 minus 230 is 33 the spec is point is 34 millimeters we're at 33 so 33 34 got to figure there might be a little fudge factor in the spring in this gauge right here but i'm comfortable with that that looks good Okay, so the belt is properly tensioned. Now it needs to be aligned. Okay, so if you look, you can see that my belt is not in the center of the, we can take this out, let's get this out of here. We're done with that. The other adjustment, this alignment's gonna be the left side adjuster. Okay, so 
you can see that it's too tight over here and it's too loose over here. So we need to get that back to center. So the way that we do that is we loosen up our axle nut once again, and then we turn the left side adjuster only uh, until that belt is, uh, and we're gonna turn the wheel backwards until uh, that starts to move away. And then when it's centered, will uh, will retorque. Okay, so I'm going to loosen this back up some. All right. Now we're going to get our socket over here and get it on here. that we're on the adjuster okay and then we're going to tighten that adjuster while we, while we watch the sprocket and rotate the wheel backwards okay i think we got this pretty well aligned now i can't get it all in one camera view but you you saw it before and you saw that it was way over here to the left you couldn't see any teeth now if you look at it you know it it there's plenty of room there and and you can see the teeth on the driven gear on the driven sprocket and if i rotate the camera over you can look in the other side and you can see the teeth on the driven sprocket there so that's about as good as i can get it so i'm going to retorque this uh, axle nut now to 15 and then 60 uh, and then we're going to recheck the belt tension okay so basically we got this uh, all uh, adjusted and retorqued and uh, we got the belt back in the center of the driven pulley the driven sprocket if you will you see that side has has pretty good amount of uh, teeth showing and that side has pretty good amount of teeth showing and that's with the uh, with with it all torqued back up um, and uh, so we're aligned and we're pretty much dead on on the alignment marks side to side and we're at 34 millimeters of deflection so i think that's about as good as we can get okay for the last part of this they tell you to pump the rear brake get that caliper all set back where it's supposed to be all right and that's an aftermarket brake pad brake pedal cover that i got at bike week in daytona beach and i want to say something about this horn it's a buffalo brand air horn and the the 14 through the 17 16 17 bikes had had this horn cover 16 i think and then 17 and 18 have the horn up front little weaselly terrible horn <coughs> this one had a my horn was under here um, uh, the buffalo brands um, makes this air horn for the indian all stainless steel marine grade uh, plated brass um, the electronics and compressor are all contained under the horn cover <laughs> And he makes these for the new, newer style bikes as well. Your horn on the front will go away, um, and uh, and the whole works is hidden under the under here. So it's pretty pretty cool deal. That doesn't have any storage tank or anything like that. The compressor is able to develop the the air on the fly. So um, that's um, pretty nice. Um, Buffalo Brands. Buffalobrand.co, Buffalobrand.co, and uh, he uh, he 
he'll hook you up with one of these horns. They run about $270, give or take. Uh, I think is about the going rate for these, but uh, they are loud, man. Sounds like a freaking tugboat coming down the road. It's awesome. I've used it in anger uh, numerous times now. So anyway, check that out if you're not happy with your horn. It looks cool too. They make them for the Roadmaster. It's an eight inch horn versus the this size here. So two different sizes. They don't have them for Harley yet, So, but he's, he's working on it. Um, anyway, uh, Randy Verdun is the guy's name and uh, he's a super stand-up guy and uh, if you happen to run across him at one of his deals he'll actually put it on for you for free so not hard to put on yourself though not at all all right um, I think we're all done I'm gonna put my muffler back on I'm gonna put my saddlebags back on and um, that's how you adjust uh, and align the belt on the uh, on the Indian motorcycle so Hope this uh, video helped. Take her easy.